Welcome to club number five and welcome to Nottingham Forest. So after resigning from Leeds United, Nottingham Forest was the only job available in the championship. Very similar to Leeds United and how they have finished. They were in seventh place last season in the championship. The same place where Leeds United of course finished and they sacked their manager on that basis. In terms of our board expectations for the current season, they are only expecting a top half finish. Of course, us personally, I do want more than that. I want at least playoffs with this uh, Nottingham Forest side. And one of the main reasons why I'm not hoping for any higher was one player who I specifically really, really wanted to join Nottingham Forest for, which takes us to our transfer out. Paul O'Neill is a player I was chasing at Leeds United ever since I took over. He's went and joined Fulham for £31.5 million pounds, and I'm absolutely devastated about it. He had a minimum fee release clause in his contract the second I took over at, at uh, Nottingham Forest. Three clubs all activated it straight away, one of which was Fulham. I tried to talk him round. I tried to get him to, to uh, sign a new contract. He wasn't interested in discussing a deal and we miss out on probably the best player in the championship. Now I'll quickly address some of the other outs. You don't really know any of these players, so it doesn't really matter too much. One Mina left to join for uh, left somebody. <laughs> Let me try and speak a little bit better. He left to join Liga de Quito for a fee that could rise to five and a half million. He's not good enough for the championship, in my opinion, so I was happy to see the back of him. George Johnston wanted to leave to join Hibernian, so we obliged. £3.9 million the fee could rise to. A very, very good centre-back and somebody I probably would have liked to have kept a hold of. But he was kicking up a fuss, so out the door he went. And that's basically it for the outs. There's been plenty of other loans and smaller fees left, but there were just players who were just not good enough to currently be at the club. We have let our uh, head of youth development go a little bit nuts in terms of signing players for the under-18s and the under-23s. So we'll skip through most of them. We'll start with our first permanent signing that we made was Florian Giannin. He signed from Lyon on a free transfer. Now, this is a lad who I've been monitoring since he was probably 17 years old. He was very high potential at that age and at that time. So, over the past five or four seasons, he maybe hasn't quite developed as much as he probably should have. His nine finishing is one of the major concerns which we are trying to improve during training. But uh, on a free transfer, now valued at 14 million, it seemed like a bit of a no brainer. Four star, four and a half star. He will probably be our starting striker for this season. One of the others we decided to bring in was Bruno Correa from Olympiacos on a free transfer. He was worth 300k. My scout came in and said, if you bid zero, they will accept. And they certainly did. He's a decent enough little player. He's going to be sitting in our under-23s. We'll try and get him long game time out. He is currently wanted by a side, so it's likely he will leave the club. But another very, very good signing on a free transfer, I would say. And that takes us to our fee PN transfers and we did raid Leeds just a little bit during this window. Jason Westbrook we signed from them for £400,000. He will be our starting right winger essentially replacing Phil O'Neill and while he's nowhere near his level in terms of current ability I thought for the fee we're paying the wages we're paying and his current ability and potential ability is decent enough for this level and he should at least be able to get us out of the championship. And the fact that he was English played a pretty big deal of it as well. Sasha Cabrini was next in from Udinese, 1.3 million. They didn't have any defensive midfielders at Nottingham Forest, so we needed to bring in a couple. This is one of them who will be playing back up. He will not be a starter. Two and a half star current, four star potential. Very good physically, well-rounded mentally, a little bit weak uh, technically, but that's absolutely fine by me. He is just going to be a backup. And at 21 years old, he's got plenty of time to grow. Next up was Savo Vasilevic from uh, Red Star, £2.3 million. Pounds. Going to be a starting centre-back for us this season. Three-star current, five-star potential. Teamwork and work rate to die for. Physicals are absolutely fantastic. Mentally, a little bit weak in some other areas. Same with his technicals, so he does have a lot of room to improve. And hopefully he will do that over the course of next season in the Championship. Ilan Delpi was signed from Paderborn for £2.5 million. Pounds. He will be our starting defensive midfielder. Again, pretty well-rounded for that role. Three and a half star current and uh, potential ability. So it's unlikely that he's going to massively grow at the club. And it's, you'll have a notice, there's been a bit of a different way I've been signing compared to Leeds United. I'm not signing with the thought of these boys being Premier League players. A lot of them I've signed just to try and get us out of this league. And we'll look in the summer next season if we do get promoted at making massive changes then. Another Japanese striker, anybody? Can he be Kaichi Goto? Probably not. He is going to be playing back up to start with, but he might end up taking uh, Florin in spot. 
at striker. 23 years old, three and a half star current, three and a half star potential. Very fast, which I love. Really good at finishing, which I love. Complete opposite to Florinin in that regard. Um, but he a little bit lacking in his overall player, I would say. His work rate's not great. His teamwork's not great. His vision's poor. His passing's not fantastic. His long shots are poor. His heading's poor. Jump and reach is terrible. So there is definitely limitations with this boy, but I would admit, I think he might end up taking the starting spot this season. £2.8 million, pound, but was probably the only player I might anticipate playing in the Premier League. Lucas Pintner from uh, Partizan, an 18-year-old left-back. Uh, he's got a lot, a lot of potential to grow, and I'm really excited as to how good he can get over the course of this season. He's very well-rounded already. He's more than good enough for the Championship. We're working to try and improve his uh, quickness and his pace. We are also working to try and improve his crossing ability, if that can be done. Um, so we'll see how he develops over the course of the season. Next up was David Ballas from FC Vitterol for £3 million. Going to be another starting centre-back for me, 19-year-old Romanian. Natural fitness is a concern, but we've got backup players should we need them. Technically, he's pretty much spot on. 30 markings not ideal, but we do have him working on his marking and positioning in his individual training. His other mentals are pretty well-rounded. Physically, he's pretty good apart from his natural fitness. So, uh, happy to get him in at 19 years old. Max Rodriguez from Liverpool for £4 million. Now, I'll not lie. A lot of the reason why I signed this guy is because he's English. Um, that was going to be one of the main themes for this transfer window. Trying to sign as many English players as we can. And we do... I think we've signed maybe about four for the first team. He's coming in as a central midfielder. Then he'll be playing in the centre midfield attacking role for us. It's been pretty successful on my son and save having Bally Mumba in that um, role. So we'll see how this guy gets on for the rest of the season. And at 20 with potential to grow. Ideal. Armando Harewood from Leeds United. Our right back from our championship days uh, in Leeds. He was our backup right back last season in the Premier League. I've decided to bring him back as he is very, very good for the championship level. Incredibly well-rounded physically. Very good mentally. Decent enough technically. Doesn't look like he has that much potential to grow, but we're not interested in that. We're interested in his current ability right now, which is more than good enough for the championship. I believe he's a Premier League right back. My scouts don't think so, but that's what I think. Um, so hopefully he will still continue to grow over the course of this season and might even be our starting right back should we get promoted. Lee Pierce was our final signing. A very expensive signing at £11 million, but we needed a left winger. I was prioritising English players. And Coventry definitely bartered pretty hard for this price. But a three and a half star, four and a half star, I think he's a decent signing. Uh, physically, he's pretty good. Mentally, he's fantastic. And technically, he's decent enough as well. We, ha we do have him working on his crossing ability, which is one of the major weaknesses in his um, in his current attributes. But hopefully, we'll get plenty of game time out of this blo bloke and he will be more than good enough for the championship. So that pretty much completes our signings. We have played two games already this season. The first of which was a 3-1 home win against Rotherham. Uh, not a great game in terms of performances. As you'll see in the next game, we're not actually playing pretty well just now. Obviously, a lot of new faces, new tactic, all that stuff. It'll take time to uh, get into the players' minds and for them to be comfortable with it. Savo Vasilovic, our centre-back scorer and Lee Pierce, and our Japanese striker came off the bench and got a goal in the 87th minute. The next one was a 1-0 away defeat against Preston. Disappointing game this one. We didn't play well and we didn't deserve any points at all. So the championship looks like this. We're sitting mid-table after two games, of course. We will start to get a feel for where we actually lie in this table, maybe after about 15 games or so. So I'm not going to panic just yet. <laughs> in terms of transfers, the transfer window has closed, but we still have £17 million and 50k per week available in the wage budget. So January could be massive depending on where we are sitting in the league. Financially, Nottingham Forest aren't doing too bad. They're not expected to have much money come the end of the season, minus £18 million uh, financial budget. But we have kept ourselves within the budget set by the board, so we're not going to concern ourselves too much with that. So that is pretty much it for the squad. This will be our starting eleven. should everybody be fit. Agu was a goalkeeper already at the club, more than good enough for the championship, so we are going to keep him in that place. Armando, Harewood, Vasilovic, Balas, Pinter, all new signings, all complete now defensive line. Delpy and Max Rodriguez, all new signings. Westbrook, Pierce, who wasn't a signing, he was already at the club and he's actually fantastic. Welsh attacking midfielder with potential to grow, currently four-stop. Absolutely great, don't need to replace him. Pierce and Giannin, 
is the final one. So we've obviously got some injury problems at the moment, so we won't be able to play this squad right now. Howard and um, Westbrook are both injured, so our right-hand side is a little bit weaker than it would usually be. But let's get into today's game at home against Middlesbrough. I'm hoping for a win. I'm hoping for a win. <laughs> So they come at us with a 4-1-2-3. Any familiar faces in here? Fontana, a former man at Huddersfield, I believe, in the Championship. Signed for Millsbury. He's an absolutely fantastic player. Other than that, I don't really... Is that one of ours? No. Marcus Parry on loan. Yeah, it is. Marcus Parry on loan from Huddersfield as well. And Coronado, of course, of Huddersfield. <laughs> so the Middles Middlesbrough huddersfield connection is pretty strong here. Let's see how we get on. First highlight of the game comes three minutes in. It's us with the throw-in on the left-hand side with Pinter. And we played about well keeping possession. That was a dodgy pass. Don't do that again. Pinter's looking to overlap on this left-hand side. He finds Pierce inside the box. He gets dispossessed by Riley. And our middles were going to counter. They are absolutely not well defended. Pinter again on this left-hand side. Whips it in. Rodriguez down a hard. Oh, back up right winger. Cannot get the shot on target. Another highlight now, 12 minutes in. Pierce, long ball over the top for Gian, and he's in behind. And that's his finishing coming into play. We should be starting the Japanese striker. I've, I've just got the feeling that um, that's going to have to be a change I make. We do work the ball pretty well, 14 minutes in, in the midfield and in the uh, left wing spot in particular. But we do go to the right hand side for hard. Eventually, the ball's played back to Guerrero. Rodriguez, oh, parry with an easy save. This has been the best we've played so far. In the three games, 20 minutes in, and it's, it's not great. We're not absolutely killing Middlesbrough, and we're not really creating that many key opportunities in the final third. But we're getting there. Middlesbrough now on the attack with Riley through the centre, playing a one, nice little one-two with Angel there, and a lovely little through ball for Williams on this right-hand side. He gets past his man, whips it in, Coronado. Good save by Agu. The highlight does continue after Middlesbrough's opportunity. We work it to the right-hand side. Giannin in the box gets dispossessed by the defender, but thankfully Max Rodriguez picks it up. And Parry with another good save. A very good first half going by the match stats. We did create a good couple of opportunities. Let's hope we can do a little bit better in the second. I'm not I'm not going to tell the boys I'm particularly happy with how they're playing. We're playing at home. Um, it's probably a game where we should win. We've at least got equal to better players in every position in this Middlesbrough side. So um, I'm hoping for a better performance in the final 30. We're going to take off Giannin. Uh, Florian is not playing very well today. And we'll bring on Shuto Shoji. Ball's whipped in by Hard from the free kick. Vasilovic gets his head on it, but I'm not sure if that was a highlight worthy. 15 minutes to go. Not a lot happening in this game, really. Emilio Jose Herrero can come on that right-hand side for Hard. Uh, Pierce can come off for Adam Lewis as well. He's our backup left winger slash left back. So we do have some options off the bench, but our strength and depth isn't top tier. And time is just ticking away. The second half has been dreadful. I'm a little bit scared to go on very attacking just in case we get caught in the counter. And it doesn't look like we're going to get any goals in today's game unless this is a highlight worthy of a strike. Pierce on the left-hand side, back to Pinter, gets blocked by Middlesbrough. Why is it showing me this? Is this leading to something? Delpy to Rodriguez with three minutes over the allotted time. We do have a free kick. And that was it. <laughs> That's what they wanted to show me so much. A disappointing game not getting the win there, but a better performance. Um, than we have in the previous two. So I'm relatively content with that. Of course, we've got a lot of work to do in the squad, a lot of work in training, a lot of work on the tactic, but um, I think we might just about have enough to at least get in the playoffs. I am, of course, secretly hoping automatic, um, but maybe our signings haven't quite been at the same sort of level as the likes of Leeds and stuff, but then again, we didn't have the money that we had at Leeds. So we are going to fly through the first half of this season. We'll look to come up... We'll come back somewhere around here depending on what size are close to us and stuff like that. But uh, you know how this sort of save goes now. We do one episode in between transfer windows in the first half of the season just to get through this championship season as quickly as we possibly can. So let me know what you think about Nottingham Forest. Do you think the signs have been any good? Do you think we are going to get promoted? And is it a possibility that we could be in the Premier League next season? Let me know in the comments down below. Leave a like, get yourself subscribed and until next time, Take it easy.